Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket The Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket is an electromagnetic thruster under development for possible use in spacecraft propulsion. It uses radio waves to ionize and heat a propellant. Then a magnetic field accelerates the resulting plasma to generate thrust. It is one of several types of spacecraft electric propulsion systems. The Vesemer method for heating plasma was originally developed from nuclear fusion research. It is intended to bridge the gap between high thrust, low specific impulse and low thrust, high specific impulse systems, and is capable of functioning in either mode. Former NASA astronaut Franklin Chang Dias created the Vasimer concept and has been developing it since 1977. Vasimer's units for development and test are assembled by Ad Astra Rocket Company in Costa Rica. Vasimer, sometimes referred to as the Electrothermal Plasma Thruster or Electrothermal Magnetoplasma Rocket, uses radio waves to ionize and heat the propellant, which is then accelerated with magnetic fields to generate thrust. This engine is electrodeless, of the same propulsion family as the electrodeless plasma thruster, the microwave arc jet, or the pulsed inductive thruster class. It can be thought of as an electrodeless version of an arc jet rocket that can reach higher propellant temperature by limiting the heat flux from the plasma to the structure. Neither type of engine uses electrodes, this eliminates the electrode erosion that shortens the life of other ion thruster designs. Since every part of the Vasimer engine is magnetically shielded and does not directly contact plasma, the durability of this engine is predicted to be greater than many other ion-slash-plasma engines. Vasimer has been described as a convergent-divergent nozzle for ions and electrons. The propellant is injected into a hollow cylinder surfaced with electromagnets. On entering the engine, the gas is first heated to a cold plasma by a helicon RF antenna that bombards the gas with electromagnetic waves stripping electrons off the propellant atoms and producing a plasma of ions and loose electrons that flow down the engine compartment. By varying the amount of energy dedicated to RF heating and the amount of propellant delivered for plasma generation, Vesemer is capable of generating either low thrust, high specific impulse exhaust or relatively high thrust, low specific impulse exhaust. The second phase of the engine is a strong electromagnet position to compress the ionized plasma in a similar fashion to a convergent-divergent nozzle that compresses gas in traditional rocket engines. A second coupler, known as the ion cyclotron heating section, emits electromagnetic waves in resonance with the orbits of ions and electrons as they travel through the engine. Resonance is achieved through a reduction of the magnetic field in this portion of the engine that slows the orbital motion of the plasma particles. This section further heats the plasma to greater than about 173 times the temperature of the sun's surface. The path of ions and electrons through the engine approximates lines parallel to the engine walls, however, the particles actually orbit those lines while traveling linearly through the engine. The final, diverging, Section of the engine contains an expanding magnetic field that drives the ions and electrons in steadily expanding spirals and ejects them from the engine, parallel and opposite to the direction of motion at velocities as great as. In contrast to the typical cyclotron resonance heating processes, Vasimer ions are immediately ejected from the magnetic nozzle before they achieve thermalized distribution. Based on novel theoretical work in 2004 by Alexei V. Arifiev and Boris N. Briesman of University of Texas at Austin, virtually all of the energy in ion cyclotron wave is uniformly transferred to ionized plasma in a single-pass cyclotron absorption process. This allows for ions to leave the magnetic nozzle with a very narrow energy distribution, and for significantly simplified and compact magnet arrangement in the engine. Vasimer does not use electrodes, instead, it magnetically shields plasma from most hardware parts, thus eliminating electrode erosion, a major source of wear in ion engines. Compared to traditional rocket engines with very complex plumbing, high-performance valves, actuators and turbo pumps, Vasimer has almost no moving parts, maximizing long-term durability. However, new problems emerge, such as interaction with strong magnetic fields and thermal management. The relatively large power at which Vasimer operates generates substantial waste heat that needs to be channeled away without creating thermal overload and thermal stress. Powerful superconducting electromagnets, necessary to contain hot plasma, generate Tesla range magnetic fields that can cause problems with other onboard devices and produce unwanted torque by interaction with the magnetosphere. To counter this latter effect, the VF200 consists of two 100 kW thruster units packaged with magnetic fields oriented in opposite directions, 
making an at zero torque magnetic quadrupole. The first Bessemer experiment was conducted at Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1983 on the magnetic mirror plasma device. Important refinements were introduced to the rocket concept in the 1990s, including the use of the helicon plasma source, which replaced the plasma gun originally envisioned and made the rocket completely electrodeless, adding to durability and long life. A new patent was granted in 2002. In 1995, the Advanced Space Propulsion Laboratory was founded at NASA Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center, in the Sunny Carter Training Facility. The magnetic mirror device was brought from MIT. The first plasma experiment in Houston was conducted with a microwave plasma source. Collaboration was established with University of Houston, UT Austin, Rice University, and other academic institutions. In 1998, the first helicon plasma experiment was performed at the ASPL. Vassimer Experiment 10 in 1998 achieved a helicon RF plasma discharge as great as 10 kilowatts, VX25 in 2002 as great as 25 kilowatts, and VX50 as great as 50 kilowatts. In March 2000, the Vassimer Group was given the Rotary National Award for Space Achievement slash Stellar Award. By 2005 breakthroughs were obtained at ASPL including full slash efficient plasma production and acceleration of the plasma ions. V.X. 50 proved capable of a thrust. Published data on VX50, capable of 50 kilowatts of total radio frequency power, showed ICRF efficiency to be 59% calculated by 90% N coupling efficiency times 65% N ion speed boosting efficiency. Ad Astra Rocket Company was incorporated on January 14, 2005. On June 23, 2005, Ad Astra and NASA signed the first Space Act agreement to privatize Avisimmer technology. On July 8, 2005, Diaz retired from NASA after 25 years. Ad Astra's board of directors was formed and Diaz became chairman and CEO on July 15, 2005. In July 2006, ARC opened its Costa Rica subsidiary in Liberia on the campus of Earth University. In December 2006, ARC Costa Rica performed its first plasma experiment on the VXCR device, using helicon ionization of argon. The 100 kW Vasimer experiment was successfully running by 2007 and demonstrated efficient plasma production with an ionization cost below 100 electron volts. V.X. 100 plasma output tripled the prior record of the VX50. Model VX100 was expected to have an ion speed boosting efficiency of 80%. Instead, Efficiency losses emerge from the conversion of DC electric current or radio frequency power and the energy consumption of the auxiliary equipment for the superconducting magnet. By comparison, 2009 state-of-the-art, proven ion engine designs such as NASA's high-power electric propulsion operated at 80% total thruster PPU energy efficiency. On October 24, 2008 the company announced that the plasma generation component of the VX200 engine, Helicon first stage or solid state high frequency power transmitter had reached operational status. The key enabling technology, solid state DCRF power processing, reached 98% efficiency. The helicon discharge used 30 kilowatts of radio waves to turn argon gas into plasma. The remaining 170 kilowatts of power was allocated for acceleration of plasma in the second part of the engine via ion cyclotron resonance heating. Based on data from VX100 testing, it was expected that the VX200 engine would have a system efficiency of 60 to 65 percent and thrust level of 5. An optimal specific impulse appeared to be around 5000 s using low-cost argon propellant. One of the remaining untested issues was potential versus actual thrust, whether hot plasma actually detached from the rocket. Another issue was waste heat management. About 60% of input energy became useful kinetic energy. Much of the remaining 40% is secondary ionizations from plasma crossing magnetic field lines and exhaust divergence. A significant portion of that 40% was waste heat. Managing and rejecting that waste heat is critical. Between April and September 2009, tests were performed on the VX200 prototype with integrated two Tesla superconducting magnets. They expanded the power range of the Vasimer to its operational capability of 200 kilowatts. During November 2010, long duration, full power firing tests were performed, reaching steady state operation for 25 seconds and validating basic design characteristics. 
Results Results presented in January 2011 confirmed that the design point for optimal efficiency on the VX200 is 50 km per second exhaust velocity, or an I of 5000 S. Based on these data, thruster efficiency of 72% was achieved, yielding overall system efficiency of 60% with argon propellant. VX200 generates a thrust of around 5.4 N at 200 kW total RF power, and 3.2 N at 100 kW RF power. The 200 kW VX200 had executed more than 10,000 engine firings by 2013, while demonstrating greater than 70% thruster efficiency, relative to RF power input, with argon propellant at full power. The VF200 flight rated thruster consists of two 100 kW Vasimer units with opposite magnetic dipoles so that no net torque is applied to the space station when the thruster magnets are working. The VF201 is the first flight unit and was slated to be tested in space attached to the ISS. In June 2005, Ad Astra signed its first Space Act agreement with NASA, which led to the development of the Vasimer engine. In December 10, 2007, ARC and NASA signed an Umbrella Space Act agreement relating to the space agency's potential interest in the engine. In December 8, 2008, NASA and ARC entered into a Space Act agreement that could lead to conducting a space flight test of the engine on the ISS. From 2008 Ad Astra was working on placing and testing a flight version of the Vasimer thruster for the International Space Station. The first related agreement with NASA was signed on December 8, 2008 and a formal preliminary design review took place on June 26, 2013. In March 2, 2011, Ad Astra and NASA Johnson Space Center signed a support agreement to collaborate on research, analysis and development on space-based cryogenic magnet operations and electric propulsion systems currently under development by Ad Astra. By February 2011, NASA had assigned 100 people to the project to work with Ad Astra to integrate the VF-200 onto the International Space Station. On December 16, 2013, ARC and NASA signed another five-year Umbrella Space Act agreement. However, in 2015 NASA ended plans for flying the VF-200 to the ISS. A NASA spokesperson stated that the ISS was not an ideal demonstration platform for the desired performance level of the engines. Ad Astra stated that tests of a Vasimer thruster on the ISS would remain an option after a future in-space demonstration. Work with NASA continued in 2015 under NASA's Next Step program with planning for a 100-hour vacuum chamber test of the VX200 SSTM thruster. Since the available power from the ISS is less than 200 kilowatts, the ISS Vasimer would have included a trickle-charged battery system, allowing for 15-minute pulse-off thrust. Testing of the engine on the ISS would have been valuable, because it orbits at a relatively low altitude and experiences fairly high levels of atmospheric drag, making periodic boosts of altitude necessary. Currently, altitude reboosting by chemical rockets fulfills this requirement that the Vasimer test on the ISS might lead to a capability of maintaining the ISS, or a similar space station, in a stable orbit at 1 of the approximately $210 million year present estimated cost. In March 2015, Ad Astra announced a $10 million award from NASA to advance the technology readiness of the next version of the Vasimer engine, the VX200 SS to meet the needs of deep space missions. In August 2016, Ad Astra announced completion of the milestones for the first year of its three-year contract with NASA. This allowed for first high-power plasma firings of the engines, with a stated goal to reach 100 hours and 100 kilowatts by mid-2018. In August 2017, the company reported completing its Year 2 milestones for the Vasimer electric plasma rocket engine. NASA gave approval for Ad Astra to proceed with Year 3 after reviewing completion of a 10-hour cumulative test off the 200 SS rocket at 100 kW. Vasimer is not suitable to launch payloads from the Earth's surface because it has a low thrust-to-weight ratio and requires an ambient vacuum. Instead, the engine would function as an upper stage for cargo reducing fuel requirements for in-space transport. The engine is anticipated to perform depth following functions at a fraction of the cost of chemical technologies, drag compensation for space stations, lunar cargo delivery, satellite repositioning, satellite refueling, maintenance and repair, in-space resource recovery, and deep space robotic missions. Other applications for Vasimer such as the rapid transportation of people to Mars would require a very high power low-mass energy source, such as a nuclear reactor. 
In 2010 NASA Administrator Charles Bolden said that Vasimer technology could be the breakthrough technology that would reduce the travel time on a Mars mission from 2.5 years to 5 months. In August 2008, Tim Glover, ad Astra Director of Development, publicly stated that the first expected application of Vasimer engine is hauling things, non-human cargo, from low Earth orbit to low lunar orbit supporting NASA's return to moon efforts. The most important near-term application of Vasimer-powered spacecraft is cargo transport. Studies have shown that, despite longer transit times, Vasimer-powered spacecraft will be much more efficient than traditional integrated chemical rockets when moving goods through space. An orbital transfer vehicle essentially a space tug powered by a single VF-200 engine would be capable of transporting about 7 metric tons of cargo from low Earth orbit to low lunar orbit with about a 6-month transit time. NASA envisions delivering about 34 metric tons of useful cargo to LLO in a single flight with a chemically propelled vehicle. To make that trip, about 60 metric tons of LOX LH2 propellant would be expended. A comparable OTV would employ five VF200 engines powered by a 1 megawatt solar array. To do the same job, a Vasimer powered OTV would need to expend only about 8 metric tons of argon propellant. The total mass of such an electric OTV would be in the range of 49 tons. OTV transit times can be reduced by carrying lighter loads and or expending more argon propellant with Vasimer throttled up to higher thrust at less efficient operating conditions. For instance, an empty OTV on the return trip to Earth covers the distance in about 23 days at optimal specific impulse of 5000 s or in about 14 days at I of 3000 s. The total mass of the NASA specifications OTV was assumed to be 100 metric tons allowing almost double the cargo capacity compared to chemically propelled vehicles but requiring even bigger solar arrays capable of providing 2 megawatts. Ad Astra Rocket Company was targeting space tug missions to help clean up the ever-growing problem of space trash. As of 2016 no such commercial product had reached the market. In order to conduct a crewed trip to Mars in just 39 days, the Vesemer would require an electrical power level available only by nuclear propulsion by way of nuclear power in space. This kind of nuclear fission reactor might use a traditional rankin slash brayton slash Stirling conversion engine such as that used by the SAFE-400 reactor or the duff Power reactor to convert heat to electricity. However, the vehicle might be better served with non-moving parts and non-steam-based power conversion using a thermocell technology of the thermoelectric, pyroelectric, thermophotovoltaic, or thermionic magnetohydrodynamic type. Thermoelectric materials are also an option for converting heat energy to electric current energy. Avoiding the need for football field-sized radiators for a 200,000 kilowatt reactor with a power to mass density of 1,000 watts per kilogram this reactor would require efficient waste heat capturing technology. For comparison, a Seawolf-class nuclear-powered fast-attack submarine uses a 34-megawatt reactor, and the Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carrier uses a 300-megawatt A1B reactor. The crewed Mars mission advocate Robert Zubrin has called Vasimir a hoax claiming that it is less efficient than other electric thrusters that are now operational. He also believes that electric propulsion is not necessary to get to Mars, therefore, budget should not be assigned to develop it. His second critique concentrates on the lack of a suitable power source. Ad Astra responded in a press release. As a response to Vasimer being labeled as a hoax by Zubrin, Ad Astra added a section to their FAQ. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.